In this lesson, tell you what, let's go through all of the steps in generating a web gallery. Now let's start out with the idea of selecting our images. We've already done that, but I would totally recommend to you guys, do not forget that you have collections, because collections follow you through the modules, book, slideshow, print, web, it doesn't matter. We made a web projects set, and we have photo spin images right here. Now another way to select the images maybe out of there that you want to use is you could, and we've done this, make a subset out of photo spin images, and there's just, say, six of them. If you want them all, go ahead and click back here, and we do. But we do have one more way to make a selection here, and that's this option right here. All the images? Yeah, we want all of them. But you could say selected photos only or flagged photos only. We want to use them all, so we'll leave that alone. So we know our images now. That's step number one. Step number two is choose a template up here that best represents what you want, and then we'll modify it. Now, one of the things about web design, I do a lot of web design. I use a program called Dreamweaver, which is an absolute dream of a program. Lightroom is not Dreamweaver. It creates web pages. Now, I can incorporate those pages into something like a site in Dreamweaver. But remember the rule of consistency in web design. If I were taking this page into Dreamweaver or into a site, what I would want to know during the modification process is things like the color scheme of the original site so I could match them and make consistency between each one of the pages. That's kind of important. Let's just stick with this one right here called charcoal. It's in your Lightroom templates. Okay, I'm going to collapse this down for now and let's come over here. Now we have this template, we have our images. You click on them, shows you a bigger image, click it again, goes back. We like that. We're happy with it. It's simple. It's easy to use. Site title is up here. You can actually change it here if you want to. This, this, do it right here. But we're going to use the options over here. Go into Site Info. Now in Site Info, there's the site title. Now here's the cool thing. I've been doing web design with Lightroom and their pages for a couple of versions. And I've typed in things inside of Site Title. If you click this button right here, it will show you the things that you have typed in. Now some of these come from Lightroom 4. They automatically upgrade into Lightroom 5. And I want Andy's Image Gallery. Again, I could have changed it over here if I wanted to. Here is Collection Title. It says My Photographs Right Now. These are not my photographs. These are images by Photo Spin. I've already used that before, so I don't have to type it in. But, of course, you could type it in here if you wanted to. Collection Description says Web Photo Gallery Created by Adobe Lightroom. Now, they did create this. I have no problem with that. I didn't do it. Don't want to take credit for it. You can take it out if you want to but I'm going to go ahead and leave that in. Now my contact info, I have actually typed my name before, so I'll go ahead and say A or Andy Anderson, up to me. Type in your own name there, of course. Now here's the link, the mail link. So if I click here, if I've already done that before, I can just use it right here. Saves you a lot of time. Don't forget also when you go to these, if you do get a lot or there's just not things you want here anymore, you can always clear the list right here. Down here we have the identity plate. Now the one I've got, this is a PNG screen capture I did. If I use it, you can see where it's going to go. It's right up there. Now, I don't have to use that one. I can go in here and I can click this button. Let me turn that back on again. And click here and go into, say, for example, edit. And I can actually go into, say, maybe text, type in something else, or choose another graphic. Now the best graphics to use are PNGs. If you use it right here, you can locate the file right here and bring it right in. It's up to you. Now, I'm not going to use an identity plate, so I'll turn that one off. Now we have a web or mail link right here. Again, if you want to use that. And I could again put my email address in there if I wanted to. Next one down is color palette. In color palette, that's the color scheme of what you see. Now understand something else about the template we're using. What you see in these options will be formatted based on what you see over here. The colors obviously would change but you would have different options based on the template you chose. For example, we can change the color of the text if you don't like that. We could change the detail text. We could change the background. Let's go ahead and do that. In background, we can make it lighter or darker. Or we can change to a different color. You want to go crazy? Let's go crazy. Okay. We can change the cells, the rollovers, the grid lines, the numbers, that's the numbers right here, any colors. So these things right here, these options, would be determined by what template you had chosen. If we go to appearance, now we have a grid here, don't we? And it's going one, two, three, 
and it's going down, I can change that to, say, 4 across. Or go back to 3. So you can change that if you want to. Do you want to show the numbers on the cells or not? Do you want borders around each one of the images? Very subtle to see that, but there's a slight border going around those images. Now, on image pages, notice the warning sign here. Well, the warning sign is basically saying, okay, what you're doing here with the size, well, you're on the wrong page, you can't see it. So if I click here, watch what happens. The warning goes away, but now the warning comes up here because it's saying you can change the grid, but you're not going to see it. Watch out for that warning. Now, if we want to change the image pages as in terms of size, we could make them bigger or smaller, up to us. Do you want a border on them? Again, that's up to you. I usually like the border. I leave that on. And you can change the width of the border. Now, if you change the width of the border and make it thicker, understand the image basically will shrink in. You're not covering the image with the border. Next down is image info. Now, in image info, you have a title and you have a caption but you can choose the information that's in the title. So if I come over here and go to title and say change that to file name, there it is, right there. There's the file name. Now on caption, caption appears below the image. Say we put in the date, and you can see that now down there. And you can change that to any of this information, or what's cool is you can go into edit. And in edit, you can do anything you want, including things like exposure, shutter speed, just about anything you want to include in that information. So you can make your own custom one if you want to. Output settings. Now we're working with images in Lightroom. One of the things we didn't talk about here is prepping the images for the internet, did we? Now I would obviously do things to these images in the develop module, cloning and healing and all kinds of things, color balancing. But once you get here to the web module, what happens to the images is they will be converted in size and in format to JPEGs. So you have a quality option right here. I usually go 60 on quality. That gives me, I think, a very good looking image and it makes it smaller. Quality is actually destruction because it's a JPEG. The less quality, the smaller the image, but it doesn't look as good. I like about 60, that's kind of where I kind of hang with my images. Now metadata, you can say copyright only or everything. Metadata could include things like your physical location. So I usually don't like that information in these photos, and I say copyright only. Do you want to watermark these? Now we could come up here, let me bring that up a little bit so we can see it better. Let me come down to this one here, and go into standard text. But these aren't my images. These are photo spins images. So if I come in here, what I can do is go into standard text, and edit the watermark, and maybe change that from copyright me to photo spin. Now, if I want to save this, I would go up here and go into Save Current Settings as New Preset and call it Photospin. Click Create. Now, we can change it. We've talked about this in an earlier lesson, what we can do to make a watermark. Click Done. And now it's got Photospin. That would be on all the images. You have a sharpening option here. I usually do apply the sharpening. But basically, if I've done a lot of sharpening in the develop module, I might want to look at the images and get an idea of what they look like. Now, the sharpening is applied on output. You have low, standard, and high. Low, to me, is almost non-recognizable. Standard is typically where I want to be. High is usually a little bit more than what I want. So if I'm going to use it, I'm going to leave that on standard. Now, let's say we like what we have done, and we're happy with it. And we would like to use this again with other photo spin images. So what we do is we need to save it, because if I come back over here into my template browser and begin changing to other ones here, we're going to lose this. It's all going to go away. So we click the plus sign right here, and we call it, say, Photo Spin Image Page. I would strongly recommend that you put it into Users Templates so you can find it again, and click Create. And if we come down here, well, there it is. So we can try other ones now. There's one called Taxi. It's kind of interesting. But if we come back down to this one, there it is. Now understand something. A template is simply the page. It's not the images. So we can use this template with other collections anytime we want to. Total control over what we did from cradle to grave, creating a web gallery, and then saving it as a template.